All right, welcome back. Uh, in my last couple of videos, I was working on some long range RF stuff uh, for my mini quads, and there's really no good way to track how far you've gone unless you have GPS. So, natural progression of things, I'm going to install a GPS on one of my six inch quads, and I'm going to install GPS using this. This is a 18 by 18 GPS receiver. It's very small, very light and it only costs about $14. Uh, I got this from Ready to Fly Quads. I'll put a link in the video description below if you want to pick one of these up. And to mount it, I'm going to use uh, just this little TPU mount that I designed. Uh, I'll also put a link to this design in Thingiverse in the uh, description below. And uh, it'll just slides right in here and it goes on top of your battery. Uh, if Hopefully you're using a top mount battery otherwise you'll have to find a different mounting solution uh, and it'll just sit on top of your battery uh, with the battery strap going through the lower hole. It gives it a good clear view of the sky and uh, you should be able to pick up satellites pretty easily. I'll show you how I wired this up. All right as far as wiring goes it's pretty straightforward. Uh, take the included pigtail and you only need uh, four connections of power and a ground. The power is going to be five volts and a free uh, UART. You need the TX and, and the RX of the same UART pad. Pretty simple connection, at least on this board. This is a Omnibus F4 Fireworks. Uh, there's a 5 volt pad that is also powered by the USB. I opted to go with that one just so I could troubleshoot on the bench if I had any problems, which, um, spoiler alert, I don't. And I uh, just picked a, a UART. So the TX on the GPS goes to an RX on the board, and RX on the GPS goes to a TX on the board. Just remember that, otherwise you'll be pulling your hair out trying to figure out why this stupid thing doesn't work. And then a ground, uh, all the grounds, grounds are grounds, just find a ground. Uh, and that's it, it's pretty, pretty simple connections. It's four wires, and uh, four wires, one UART, and a five volt pad. And um, I'm not sure exactly what the power requirement of this GPS unit is, I know it's extremely low. Uh, your back should be able to support it. I'll uh, I'll put it somewhere like maybe all right there. What the power requirement is after I find it. All right, move over to Betaflight and I'll show you how to set this up. All right, once again we're back here at Betaflight. Uh, this is the new configurator, uh, ten point three point one, and uh, the uh, Betaflight 3.4, the full version, the non-release candidate is out. I suggest flashing that to your flight controller before you do this. And also, by the way, I should have mentioned earlier, F3 flight controllers, you're out of luck. Uh, GPS does not work with F3s anymore. I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure that out before I upgraded to an F4. Uh, and with Betaflight 3.4, I probably should have just went straight to an F7 since those work really well now. Um, don't use the release candidates of 3.4 as there are a lot of issues with uh, yawing in rescue mode. So this quad's already been flashed with 3.4. We're gonna connect. First thing to do is go to ports and whatever UART you wired your GPS to, uh, for me it was UART 6, go over to sensor input and select GPS. And if you're using this uh, GPS unit that I put a link to, select uh, 96 for your baud. Save and reboot. Go down to configuration and on the right hand side you're gonna see GPS. Go ahead and select that and for your protocol uBlocks. Um, I leave auto baud disabled and auto config enabled and uh, leave ground assistance type as auto detect and uh, magnetom magnetometer declination I don't know what that does. I just left it as default. Uh, save and reboot once again. Now you will see on the left hand side here you have a new tab uh, that says GPS and it only shows up if you're in expert mode so make sure you enable that. Go over to GPS and if you had a clear uh, sight to the sky you would actually start populating your GPS or your satellites and your quality and you'll actually get a uh, like a Google Maps rendering of where you're at. 
Uh, obviously, an insight in a basement with a metal roof, not going to work. Uh, so you see the satellite IDs. It's picking up a few satellite IDs, so I know it's at least working. Uh, next thing to do is go to OSD and make sure you enable your uh, GPS type mode. So for me, this is uh, distance to home and direction, lat long. How many satellites? This one's very important. You want to make sure you have that enabled. Uh, altitude. Uh, this altitude, I believe, is based off my barometer. But if you didn't have a barometer, I'm pretty sure that would populate with a uh, GPS uh, altitude. Not 100% sure on that one. Uh, and speed. And that's uh, that's all I enabled, um, just because that's that's all I really wanted. Uh, select your units on. Uh, picking uh, American uh, Freedom Units. And make sure you hit save on that, otherwise you won't save your configuration. All right, next we're gonna go over to our modes. And hopefully you have a spare um, receiver channel because Betaflight 3.4 enables a really neat feature called GPS Rescue Mode. So the whole idea of this is you lose video, whatever, you hit that switch, it's gonna come up to a specified altitude, it's gonna turn back towards home, and it's gonna fly back to you. It's not gonna land, but it's gonna get close, close enough that hopefully you can see it uh, line of sight, or your video comes back and you can, uh, you can regain control of your quad. You can also enable this as a fail safe if, uh, if you lose, uh, RC link. I don't trust it enough yet, uh, and you'll have to weigh that out if you trust yours enough or not to enable that as a fail-safe mode, but for myself, uh, I'm not there yet. But hopefully, uh, eventually, I will be. So make sure you uh, put that on a switch for me, AUX3, and uh, save that. We're going to come down to the CL CLI. Type get GPS. And here there's a bunch of new uh, new parameters that we can mess with. Uh, there's a P and I and a D adjustment for your GPS rescue throttle. Uh, if you do GPS rescue and you see that it starts to hunt really bad for altitude, you may need to tweak these. I don't know what to adjust them to, but as far as I'm concerned, as long as it flies, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, and then there's also velocity PIDs, yaw PIDs. Um, minimum throttle that in rescue mode <clears throat> your quad is going to use to maintain uh, altitude. Uh, minimum 1200 and a maximum of 1600 for is what I, I think these are the defaults and they seem to work well for me. Uh, throttle in a hover, eh, you can try to mess with that. I don't know what it's gonna, how that's going to work out. I'm not really going to mess with it. Um, minimum amount of satellites. So if you uh, if you want to just plug in and get going real quick, uh, you may want to lower this down to zero because your craft will not arm unless you have eight satellites or more. So if you do like hover checks in the house, which typically is a bad idea, but we all do it, you're not going to be able to fly your quad in the house because you probably won't get any satellites. So you may want to change this to zero, but uh, it's very important to keep an eye on how many satellites you have linked while you're flying because that will make or break your rescue mode. Here we have sanity checks. Uh, I have nothing set. Uh, if you, you should probably enable rescue sanity check on. This will uh, not allow the rescue mode to activate unless all of the valid parameters are met. And it'll also, uh, it should, also disable the quad if something goes wrong. And there's another one uh, for fail safe only, uh, you can have the sanity checks. So um, good idea to play around with these. Uh, there's a pretty good article on the GitHub for Betaflight. I'll also put a link in the description on that. A few other settings to talk about is uh, your GPS rescue angle. This is the maximum angle like nose down that your quad's going to meet to fly back home. 
So if you've got a pretty kicking headwind, 32 degrees, uh, nose down, you may not be able to make it home. So something to think about, you may want to change that. Descent distance, it's going to start to make a descent down towards what it thinks is its takeoff position, 200 meters out. Uh, ground speed, this is 2,000 centimeters per um, second. This is the altitude that's going to climb to before it um, starts to make its yaw turn to come back to home. So 50 meters. It's going to come up. It's going to turn back to home wherever the arrow is pointing on your OSD. If your arrow is not pointing towards you, it's not going to come to you. It's going to come to that arrow. And it's going to head in at 200 centimeters per second at a maximum tilt angle of 32 degrees to a distance of 200 meters before it starts to make a descent. Um, hopefully by then you've regained control of it and you've disabled rescue mode. So whatever changes you've made after you made them, uh, however you wanna make them, make sure you type save and press enter, otherwise nothing's gonna get saved. Okay, so when all set up, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, I got my GPS receiver on top with this uh, TPU battery strap mount. Uh, Race Day Quads does offer a TPU mount. I don't suggest getting it because the loop at the bottom where your strap goes through is a bit too narrow. Um, again, I'll put a link uh, for this design in Thingiverse. And, uh, you know, every quad's a little bit different. Find a way to do some strain relief on your on your wires here. Just wrapped it around the XT60. It seems to work out pretty good. And the nice thing about this setup is every time I take a battery on and off, the GPS stays right there. I don't have to mess with taking it on and off or losing it. A couple other things to note is if you're using a uh, Tyrannus, make sure you rediscover sensors because now you should have uh, lat and long. And another cool feature is you can do GPS logging into your Tyrannus. Uh, that's another video. I'll, I'll do another one on that another day. But if all else fails, you lose your quad. Hopefully, you'll have a Latin along in your Tyrannus in the logs. And I'll show you how to do that, retrieve those in worst case scenario. But like I said, another day for that. Okay, so pretty simple. Pretty easy setup. This isn't the greatest long range quad. It's a pretty heavy tank, but it's what I have for proof of concept. If, uh, if I really get into this, I might make something a little bit, a lot lighter. Uh, all right, let's take it out to the field and give it a shot. See how it goes. All right, so here's some DVR playback of one of my flights where I use rescue mode. So first thing I gotta wait to establish uh, or to acquire at least eight satellites, at least in my configuration. And we want to watch this. This is my arrow to home and distance in feet to home. And uh, it it's not super accurate, but it kind of hunts back and forth between the right general direction. And this here should be my altitude in feet. Uh, none of this is all super accurate. So one thing I noticed with having it set to feet is once you get to 1,000 feet, it drops the foot mark. So now it's 1,600 feet. Direction still shows pretty much to home. I'm doing a few turns to see if I lose uh, video. And to make sure that my arrow to home kind of points in at least the right direction. I'm going to head out to the end of this field. Still have pretty good video, good RSSI. Make a turn back. Here I start to lose a little bit of video. It looks a lot better in the goggles than it does in DVR, but I'm sure everybody knows that by now. And I'm going to enable rescue mode here in a second. You'll see down here where it says air. I've enabled rescue mode. It's going to come up to my preset altitude, and you see how it's kind of hunting for altitude with the throttle. 
and it's making its turn back in, and here it just kind of cuts the throttle, makes a descent to to where it thinks I'm at. But it's not super accurate. It didn't work the greatest for me. Uh, I think I need to try it a few more times in a few different situations. Uh, I'm back over. Let's see if I show it. Yeah, I'm back inside the woods right there. So thoughts about beta flight? GPS rescue mode. I think it's got a ton of potential, especially for long range. Uh, I need to sort out the functionality of rescue mode before I can trust it as a fail safe. Uh, and uh, I just got to get a little more wide open space between me and the quad just to just to see how things go. But I think there's a lot of potential here. If you're doing a long range quad and you haven't put a GPS on it, it can't hurt. It weighs like six grams not including the wire, a couple bucks. And, you know, the the ability to have rescue mode to get yourself out of a jam, hopefully out of a jam, and then the position logging in the Tyrannus, I think are going to be two huge things for long-range quads um, in the event that something goes wrong, at least you'll be able to try to find your gear. And it's not even that I really care about the quad. It's the stinking GoPro. The GoPro's the, the hard part or the, the expensive part, especially the Session 5s, because, I mean, you lose one, that's like killing a unicorn now. Anyways, uh, if you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, reshare this, do all those things. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions uh, that you would like an answer to, or if you have any ideas for future videos, please put them in the uh, comments. I read every one of them, I respond to every one of them. Um, I love doing this stuff, and it, I, I like interacting with the people. So, anyways, uh, happy flying, and catch you next time.